republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome to April 16th meeting of the county council. All my colleagues are here except Chase, who is unable to attend. Sean Tuttle is here to make sure we do it right. We welcome everybody that's here. So, uh, on the agenda, Charlie, you go the short stick. You get to go first. <laughs> I appreciate that either way. Um, I'm here responding to an email from the auditor in March to report on the COVID grant the library <coughs> last year. Um, we spent all the money. We've been to the project. We've already got the new computers up and been using them for a while but the bulk was on the digital scanner that we've been doing uh, local history so uh, some of that's on Indiana memory and some of it's on our website we created called Kiwana history so we got people working on it around the clock right now uh, there's a kind of like an unemployment agency for people that's hurt themselves on the job like an occupational thing uh, reemployability and they send me candidates and I've trained some of them to scan. Oh. So that machine's been being used every day for about two months. So we'll have all that history preserved if you're ready to move on to the next stage of history we collect. For those that don't know, do you want to scan <coughs> what your title is, please? So if there is someone here that doesn't Charlie Rude, you want a library director? Thank you. Man. <laughs> like everyone knows, but yeah, the that's fine. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Just wanted to come and answer any questions over the grant um, and close it out, finish it up. I think any report I'd give you from here on would be we're done. Don't have anything else further except using the equipment every day to do the mission that the whole purpose of it. I believe as long as the funds have been used. And then you don't have to report to us that okay. you've been done. You've, you've accomplished There's your goal and the requirements. There's a packet with the auditor, and then I left one here with all the detailed receipts. And if anyone wants to look at it, I have it here. If anyone wants to look at it, they're welcome to. Thank you. We're glad to get worked sure. out. Glad all out. started over finding a Abraham Lincoln assassination newspaper under the piano on, in the library. So I was trying to figure out how to preserve history. That was about 10 years ago. <coughs> so to see it come through and start actually saving the history that's deteriorating, it's not going to be good to save. Now we'll make it accessible to everybody and hopefully expand into more Fulton County material too once we're done. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you were able to do that. So Preserve so the history. So the ARPA funds were appreciated mm -hmm. and yes. we had no, no problem using mm -hmm. them. I gave a few people in the room here a tour of it and showed them what they're doing. Um, also have a high school page that comes in and scans for me too so we're trying to collaborate with as much free labor as we can you know. <laughs> anyone got any questions or comments for Charlie <clears throat> thank you much thank you, thank you much. guys appreciate it uh, no worries uh, next on the agenda I have Mr. Lee here for NDOT but he requested to be here but I don't see him so we'll move on to department updates. Mr. Geyer, Mr. Fish, whoever wants to jump in and go first. Sorry, Travis, I saw you bend down. I didn't see. All right. He did that on purpose. Good evening. Um, don't have a whole lot tonight other than um, guys been patching holes, running the brush cutter, changing culverts, um, working on getting uh, old 31 ready for paving here next month. Um, I did put out an RFP today for uh, old 31 North, we are paving yet, so we'll be selecting a consultant on that project here pretty soon. That's five years out. So RFP 
RFP out for it. Uh, Bridge 33, we get started on it. That's five years out or four years now. But uh, Bridge 161, <clears throat> that one's a federal aid project. We let that this fall. And uh, we've had some issues with right away utilities down there, but we seem to be getting them cleared out. So that's starting to move forward again. Can I interrupt you? Yes. And just all know. You said that you put out an RFP today mm -hmm. for for consultant selection on for, old 31 North for the engineering on it. That won't happen for five years out. Right. We so really? just got awarded the project. We right. Got awarded say about six million dollars. Okay. Give or take some change. Okay. For the project in whole. Okay based on our preliminary engineering estimates. Okay. And then now we will select an engineering firm to help us design and pave that road. In five years. <coughs> Which is exactly Is that what how you, see, I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah. That, that. Even though the actual work won't be done forever and ever, you have to start now. So our match, so it's an 80-20. Yeah. So our match will start budgeting back starting this year. We'll start budgeting back, you know, hundred plus thousand dollars and save back for that project in five years. Which is exactly what we did on 31 South. Which that one, they start paving here probably in May, is what I've been told. Um, so five years ago we put out an RFP, selected a consultant. They designed the design work and then we just went out for letting in January on that. And then that'll come come to pass this summer. Does, does anything another stupid question. Does anything ever happen that the design work that the standard that have the change within five years? Yes. Prices and you bet. There's lots of variables. Huh. Okay, sorry. This one will be interesting because you know we're widening the shoulders to yes. accommodate buggies. Uh, there's cutting downhill at 450 for site. There might be the possibility of putting in, you know, turn off lanes. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider on that road at all. Well, that's going to be a unique project. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Yes, sir. The last bridge, is that the one over Gratiot Creek? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What was that number again? 161. I should know that one. And we started that one four years ago. So. Huh. Yeah. All of them taken. And it's five years of paperwork and meetings. And, and if you think back, I think you went with me to one of them uh, when we first got it meetings five years ago. In the court? Yeah. Talking about? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't remember the topic, but he went with me on yep. that. Interesting. Okay. Probably, Thank you. Probably paving old 31 south. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> we did get uh, community crossings awarded to us since I last talked to you. We got a million and a half in community crossing projects. So we'll take in paving, some culvert replacement, and some asphalt treatment. So that'll be happening. Uh, we go for bids for them on the 6th of May, so that'll be moving forward here this summer. But that's a, is that a 75%, 25 match? Or? Yes. <coughs> We'll have about a half a million dollars in match money there. Okay. I'm not even gonna try the math. <laughs> right. uh, next thing I want to talk to you about was uh, State Road 14. They're closing in. Uh, talked to the commissioners last night. We're gonna set up uh, unofficial detours for that on 550 South, which is the Star City Blacktop and 400 North. We're going to take them from 17 over to 35. We work with NDOT and Glasgow County. That's the best routes we've got to get everybody 
back over to 35. I'll tear our roads up. Basically, what I've been told is starting first of May, they're going to close that down and start changing the culverts. So it won't be a closure. I think their advertisement was from May to November, so the whole road won't be closed that long. But for a month or so, they'll have a close change of culverts. And then when they actually do the paving, there'll be one lane traffic with flaggers. So got that kind of thing. Um, other than that, uh, we got offered to buy the millings off of that. Five dollars a ton. I talked to commissioners last night and they approved that purchase. So that's all I have. And that's what we did. Took with over people on it there a couple years ago. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> it worked we gave, out well. Yeah, we gave three dollars a ton then, but that was what three, four years ago. Inflation. Yeah, that's right after we bought Key One. That worked out well. This won't be near as many, but it'll still be a significant amount. Probably looking at 20,000 times. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. That's about everything I got for you. Thank you. Does anyone else got anything? I got a kudos for the, you guys at the Iowa Department. I called you about a truck or something that ran off the road. You guys got that fixed up, looks good. Yeah, John Flint took care of that. I know I talked to John about it out there. Yeah. yeah. He fixed that up. Didn't that truck? Cement truck went off. Uh, that's what I kind of figured, but what the location was. It looked like they tried to fix it themselves and should have. <laughs> yeah. You guys did a nice job on that. That was all John. He done the rain even, I think. Anybody else got anything for John? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I emailed the reports out this morning. I apologize. I didn't get them to you sooner. Any questions on those? The questions before the monthly reports? I have none. No. All right. Um, we invoiced for roughly $54,000 last month for uh, out-of-county inmates and federal inmates. Um, we switched our phone covered or our phone contract in the jail from CTC and Stellar. That transition took place last week. Uh, went super smooth last week, I expected it to. Um, part of that transition is we've got a uh, broadcasting TV in the lobby now that broadcasts out information that we put on there. So all of our public notices, like merit board meetings, chair sales, and everything we put on there, and I have crap hanging on the walls or on the counters or anything else. So it, uh, definitely streamline that. It also broadcasts out to the, the cell block, so we put information out to the inmates, like the handbook and the procedures for grievances and what for. And then also for the booking area, if there's specific things that they want to push out to inmates coming in, um, certain rules and things that they can expect coming in. So um, all in all, we're really excited about the, the, the new system coming in. So um, Jay Statlientes, our second to newest deputy. He graduates from the academy Friday. We'll go down for that uh, down at Plainfield. Um, and then he's done with FTO and everything, so we'll have him out on the road uh, pretty quick after that. So uh, we were holding 72 inmates yesterday. I didn't look this morning. Um, 15 Wabash County inmates with eight federal inmates. Um, and that is pretty much all I have. Unless you guys have questions for me? Yes, sir. When, when does Wabash County, we lose those, I know. The building's up, but they were supposed to open last fall. So I know they had issues. They had a lot of construction. Issues. Yep, a lot of construction issues. It depends on who you ask. Um, I think realistically, probably probably the middle of the summer. Um, but I know Howard County is busting at the seams right now too, and they're under a couple federal federal lawsuits from the ACLU um, concerning their overcrowding. So um, hopefully we can pick up where Wabash County leaves off. So. Yeah, we go all back tonight. Yeah, it's true too. It's we, I know we paid enough out during our jail project. It's, uh, it's a big building yeah, down there. I know yeah, that. It is, yeah. And I, they had some, I mean, they were close to opening and then they had some type of, you know, catastrophic roof, roof issue that just set everything way back. So, um, yeah, to do get a hard line. I haven't, I haven't talked to the sheriff down there in a month or so. So, so at this point, you're not holding in Howard <coughs> County? No, our, our county doesn't need us right now. We, we the doors open for them, so and I know that they're 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 working in it. So um, I I foresee in the near future we'll start holding Howard County. So. 
Anybody else, Dan? Thank you. Any extra hours? I got nothing. Kathy, you got anything? No. Tax collection started, so that fun has just begun. <laughs> <clears throat> Rick, do you want to say anything? Or do you want me to I'll say I'll let you. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> you, Amy, you're the only one left. I yeah, it's five uh, thousand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just some of you were not here yesterday, but I when I gave three quick reports. Beeman Home had a follow-up meeting with them after the uh, gentleman came. We are looking at potentially being uh, the recipients of the opportunity to check out mobile advocacy. It's a program that they are doing in Iowa to look at a different way of providing support for domestic violence and sexual assault instead of the purely shelter model, which means that we would have to figure out how to bring all the folks from Fulton County to Kosciuszko County, which according to research that the team has done is not helpful. I can imagine because they have jobs and children are in school, so it doesn't actually work that way to do that. They are looking at other models. And so the conversation that was had at our strategic plan after the follow-up was that we will be researching that, circling them around to the commissioners to talk about what mobile advocacy for Fulton County would look like. So that's all I've got for that. Um, and then we do have our transportation survey that we did get extension until the end of April. <coughs> that will help to provide a detailed report so that we can fully understand what resources are needed for transportation. So historically, uh, Transpo has done surveys of their riders, but Transpo board has given us the ability to survey the entire county. But we know that if we don't get survey results, we will not have any details to be able to put a report together. So I just keep saying that out loud that that information is there and that anybody who can help us to get survey results of what transportation needs are, whether that's related to work or grocery shopping or medicine doctor visits, that would be helpful to have people fill out surveys. So um, that is the paper copies are at the libraries. The uh, electronic version is on Facebook for the uh, le electronic survey link. And, and those surveys will end up going where to be? Yes, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, so those will go to IUK, which we've worked with them before. Um, the business okay. students will basically take the paper copies and the electronic surveys, put them in a nice report that gives us a detailed professional report that we will have the ability to present to um, the transfer board so that they can then talk to the folks at the state to share if there are needs that are uncovered that potentially Doug could apply for additional grants for. Okay. That's the hope. That's the end goal. That is the more end goal. Money. So right. more money if there's a need that's uncovered that we are not meeting and that transpo says that they could potentially meet through additional funding. Okay, thank you. So that report, I believe they said, should be ready in the summer, based on our timeline. Um, and then last but not least, I know Gail's not here to talk about it. Oh, she is, never mind, I'll let her talk about the other thing. So, she's working hard trying to. Oh, uh, April 23rd at 11, if you are interested in going to learn about Project Independence, which would be the tool that I had shared about when I presented the full strategic plan, that tool is the one-on-one um, -on -one support of individuals who have been identified in communities that continue to struggle and are unable to find themselves getting out of the system. This project independence has proven to be successful in Kosciuszko County to assist individuals to break free from the continual need for assistance. So we will be researching that on April 23rd at 11 at Combined Community Services, which is the food bank in Kosciuszko County, and anybody is welcome to attend that with us if they would like. It's an open invitation to anybody. So. Thank you. Any questions? No. Thank you. <coughs> You're welcome. Last but not least. Oh, that's
Or can we say the vestral house? See, it's what they may look at. scrambling 
who are trying to make decisions at the last minute to help those in need, in need and they're calling emergency services. There's a, there's a break there, and if we can collaborate and work together and they understand our ways and we understand theirs, I think it works better when writing a plan. And we have to have that for our emergency operation plan, a warming and cooling. Was this the meeting that was held at the Community Resource Center? Yes, ma'am. In the last? March 4th, I remember that because it's my brother's yes. birthday. <coughs> So is this new information to the people that were attending? No. Uh, ish. So were, were they they were surprised <laughs> about the need? Yeah. This is what, I, what I'm asking you. In my humble opinion, some of them looked a little shocked, which is why I think it took a second for them to circle back around, because we were concerned because there was a lack of individuals signing up to assist and we took that as disinterest but after having <coughs> our pastoral connection board member pastor hartman on hope follow up it, was it a wasn't a lack of interest it, it was, was a bit of shock that then that i mean obviously that anyways okay neither here nor there they have now some new individuals have come forth and said they would be interested now that they've processed it and okay good yeah. good so, so that meeting was beneficial very much so and and positive yeah okay we believe so okay yeah we saw work to do but we think it will be okay yeah. okay interesting yeah. thank you thank you can be well okay other than that if you're going to discuss the other then i mean well, i'm going to tell him what you want and, and that we approved it and we want them to prove it too Sure. It's next on the list. It's next on the list. Oh. Do you have anything else? <laughs> I don't have any other questions. <laughs> well, Child classification is next. Who's going to Pete, you going to do it again? No. Well, I'll do the last one. He did it. Laura, do you want to? You want me to? position that we're changing or we'll have to change the salary ordinance from nine full time to ten full time and we want to make it as of April 16th um, that that will happen and the wage will be the $21.99 an hour for that full time position and that's our recommendation to you that, that what we're doing. And to add to that I, I think that Gail um, said to us that, that Part of this request is because um, that the county 911 dispatch center is going is going to take over the city's dispatch. Yes, correct. And we have somewhat done that already. Have you? Uh, where we basically take care of everything at you know at a certain point overnight, and then any mishaps they may have down there, or they're not available, and so forth. So. Uh, we've had a joint effort uh, for quite some time now, and um, I don't know how, what that's going to look like. I don't believe I need any more staffing. Um, obviously, we had somebody that, that is going on maternity leave as we spoke, and um, and the coverage, we just need to make sure that coverage is there. So with that being said, I already have a part-timer moving that to you're moving on. Yes, she's already started and has trained and has part of her certifications. She is a prior uh, dispatcher from a few years ago. Yes, and, and I think you told us too that you have have funds yeah. to that for the, correct. They for the will salary, the benefits in your mind. Yes. yes, yes. We already have funds for that established, and we're working on a collaborative effort with the city on on a centralized dispatch. Mm -hmm. And that has not been finalized at this time. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So, so thank you, and thanks, Lori. So, so we approved that, and now we're 
asking for the approval or recommendation for the entire council. Any other questions from anybody? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the job classification. Steve. Need a second. Randy Segment. All in favor? Five zero. Pete abstain. Approved. All right. Thank you very much. Effective today. Thank you. I will let Miss Brandy know. <laughs> she is excited. Okay. Now comes the fun stuff. Anyone else? Seeing anybody? It's all fun stuff. All right. We have several ordinances to go through. You'll have to help me. Do we do first, second, third reading all tonight, or do we have to wait until next month for the third? Um, <coughs> then I would say the first two we can do tonight. Okay. All three. The last one we have to, we, of course, we No, can't. absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Last, I just didn't know if we had yeah, to yeah. That's all right. We'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves up here. We'll be all right. <laughs> uh, the first ordinance is 04162024, an ordinance establishing the approval uses of Fulton County Jail Commissary Fund. Whereas the Fulton County Council, the fiscal body of Fulton County, State of Indiana, and whereas the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, hereafter FCSO, maintain the Fulton County Detention Center, here and after the jail, established pursuant to IC code 36-2-2-24 and said jail, said jail operates a commissary for the inmates. And whereas the Fulton County Council previously established a commissary fund under the administration of the FCSO pursuant to IC code 36-8-10-21 and whereas the sheriff or the sheriff's designee without appropriation by the Fulton County Council is authorized to disturbs, disperse money from the commissary fund in accordance with the statute and provisions herein established. Whereas IC code 3-8-10 subsection 9 permits expenditure of funds on items which benefit the sheriff's office as are mutually agreed upon between the sheriff and the county council. And therefore be it ordained by the Fulton County Council, County of Fulton, State of Indiana, that the commissary fund may be utilized for the following expenditures. A, commissary operating expenses to include, but not limited to two, obtaining merchandise for resale to inmates, maintenance of the FC, FCSO and jail facilities, and compensation of personnel. B, training for employees. C, equipment purchase and rental to include but not limited to vehicles, vehicle titles, storage facilities, computers, computer software, communication devices, office machinery, office furniture, camera, photographic equipment, animals, animal training, holding and feeding equipment, and supplies for the animals, and the tire use and employees in the course of their official duty. D, any activity provided to maintain order and discipline among the inmates. E, any supplies, activities, and programs deemed by the sheriff to be beneficial to the morale and the well-being of the inmates. F, replacement of lost and damaged inmate property. G, inmate trans transit costs. H, postage for indigent inmates. I, shipping costs for equipment and evidence. J, replacement of damaged county employee property. K, investigation and special detail expenses, including controlled drug buys. L, advertising and sponsorship costs. M, matching funds for grants. N, professional, technical, and legal consulting fees. O, expenses associated with the hosting training and events and meetings. P, travel costs for employees attending professional meetings. Q, expenses associated with official events, inmates, employees, as holiday events, retirement events, service awards, plaques, recognition, etc., and are all statutory authorized uses. Are there any questions? 
I have just one. And, and sir. And so does Travis. On paragraph five, <clears throat> the IC code that was defined, 36, it should be 36810D9. Um, Lori actually drew that to our attention yeah. Thank you. Um, prior to. Because I've still not more than one. I still can't find it. Yep. <laughs> Which one is it? Travis said again. The one, now, two, three, four, five. The fifth paragraph down says, whereas Indiana Code 36, I, I can't remember what was on there, but we'll do that to our attention. It has a 3-8, and there is no 3-8. Yeah, it's 36-8-10-D9. Oh, okay. D as in David? D as in David, 9. So, so it's 36, not 3. Correct. Is the issue. <clears throat> So just write, write it in there. Did you? Good. Yes. 36, 8, 10, D, 9. Yep. Correct. Yep. Yep. Nine. Yep. Yes. Okay, thank you. Phil, you got a question? I, just real briefly, what is the current balance in the commissary fund? Oh, boy, you're asking. I'm hard sorry. Questions. Um, I don't have that figure. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. It, it, it roughly it, it maintains between 80 and 100,000. Okay. So um, to give you an exact figure, yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Got a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this an account that you keep a separate checking account on, or is it going through the auditor? Correct. Service? Yeah, none of it goes through the auditor. It's all That's statutorily defined in, in statute, and okay. uh, Jody has a cash book. We have to. <laughs> I, I think it's once every two months. Okay. Every six January months, twice a year. And July. We give you guys a commissary report of the right. expenditures out, the, the money coming in, and everything. And you'll keep doing that. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. Th we'll this is. When we went February, January, February, we were talking about the, the, the courthouse furniture. This was kind of to clean that up. That way, we don't have to come back and look for minutes on that. If for State Board of Accounts, we can say, look, if this is the reason why we got furniture for that is because you guys blessed it ahead of time with this ordinance. So uh, that's really, I mean, that's really the, the only reason for it. Most all of these A through A through R's are already in the statute. They uh, are. You know, there's something like the inmate, inmate um, personal property is loosely defined in the statute so that that'll protect us if like we lost a our staff did a shakedown i think last fall and, and lost a set of dentures for an inmate they actually threw them away so instead of that inmate filing a tort and all of that and then going through all the legal proceedings we utilize commissary and replace the 800 dollars dentures and, and then that you know just eliminates all of that so okay. any other questions no, I will entertain a motion on the initial first reading of Ordinance 04162024. I will entertain a motion to approve. Pete, Pete made the motion. Lori seconded. All in favor? <coughs> now, okay, so now you're right. Now I will ask entertain a motion for second and third reading or just a second reading? How about second and third by title only? Second and third by Third by title only. So Steve Glory approves. Or Glory. Phil approved and Steve seconded. All in favor? Second and third reading of ordinance 04162024. An ordinance establishing the approved uses of the Fulton County Jail Commissary Fund. Entertainment motion to approve. Steve approved. Pete seconded. All in favor? Approved. Secure. Thank you. <coughs> this is the 16th day. Oh, it's the passing sign. Isn't it? April. Yes, it is. Passing <laughs> sign, please. Please do your point. What's it? What's it? Maybe sign and pass. Maybe it should be that way. Okay. All right. Second ordinance 0416 A is amending the jail and detention center population general ordinance number 1019 Whereas the county commissioners of Fulton adopt a general ordinance number 1019 Jail and Detention Center Population Ordinance on November 2nd, 2020, 
in the council adopted on November 17, 2020, to maximize revenues by offering available space to house out of county inmates at a negotiated per diem rate per person per day. And whereas ordinance 10192020 establishes a Fulton County Jail facility fund, local fund number 4300 for collected per diem charges for use of unoccupied beds. And whereas ordinance 10192020 directs said funds collected to be placed in specific categories, 70% will be held for debt reduction 15% held for maintenance of the jail facility, and 15% will be held for the operation of the jail facility. And whereas it is necessary for keeping the funds separate for separate use to create additional local funds to hold the charges collected for housing out of county inmates. And whereas it is necessary to define the purpose of the three total funds that will hold the charges collected for housing out of county inmates. Therefore, be it ordained to create and maintain a total of three funds to hold charges collected for housing out of county inmates for use as follows. Number one, fund number 4300, the Fulton County Jail Facility Fund, shall now be used for holding 70% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for a period of 10 years for the purpose of paying down the debt reduction in accordance with applicable Indiana codes and bond trustee guidelines. Number two, fund number 4301, Fulton County Jail Maintenance Fund shall be established for holding 15% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for maintaining the jail facility, jail facility grounds, equipment to be used for maintaining the facility and or its grounds, buildings or maintaining storage space for equipment to be used for maintaining the facility and its grounds or for any other purpose the Fulton County Council approves. Number three, fund number 4302, Fulton County Jail Operations Fund shall be established for holding 15% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for operation of the facility, including supporting wages for all sheriff's department personnel, including employees of the jail facility and Sheriff's Department employees, merit deputies, benefits, supplemental wages, and training. These funds may be utilized as requested by the Fulton County Sheriff and appropriated by the Fulton County Council. This ordinance shall be enforced in effect upon passage. So for those who are new to the board, Sheriff Sailors, when we built the jail, he suggested that we take out-of-county inmates and then he also suggested that we take that fund and use it for future maintenance costs, future staffing issues, and also to pay down the bond when it comes due in 10 years. And we made this ordinance, Rick was here, we made this ordinance so that the money goes to those funds and no one else after Sheriff Sailors and Sheriff Heisman can dip into those funds for something that we designate that we don't want to use them for. This is just a bit of accounting because otherwise it was all in one fund and the auditor had no way of knowing if they use this fund if it comes out of what. So this is just an accounting issue that we do to make sure we have three separate funds that the money, when we get it every month, will be divided 70, 15, and 15. So it goes into separate funds. The current funds are in 4,300, will be divided 70, 15, and 15. So that we know now that, um, we know exactly what fund it's gonna come out of, and we can't touch that 70%. So that in 10 years, when the bond comes up for refinance, we have hopefully several million dollars to put on the bond to be able to pay the jail down and save the county interest. That, that was the uh, foresight in doing this. This is just an accounting issue. Any questions? <clears throat> Ron, I did read on the original ordinance after I spoke with you guys earlier. Um, it did say that the said ordinance shall be altered or added without a unanimous vote from the commissioners and the council. 
but we're required both you and the, the commissioner. Okay, that was a question we'd asked earlier. Yeah, and I didn't read that until we were sitting out here. Can we take it to the commissioners after the fact and bring it up at your next meeting? For I, don't know why, I don't know why not. Yeah. Okay, all right, I just, I don't yeah. want to delay it anymore. I want to get it started if possible. Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, if there are no questions, I entertain a motion on the first reading of ordinance 0416-2024-A. <laughs> Steve approved, Lori seconded, all in favor? Six zero. Now I will also entertain a motion to approve second and third reading of this ordinance by title only. Second. Lori moved, Pete seconded, all in favor? Second, third reading, amending jail, I'm sorry, ordinance 0416-2024-A, amending the jail and detention center population, general ordinance 101920. I will entertain a motion to approve the second and third reading. So moved. Bill moved, Lori seven, all in favor? Six zero, thank you very much. This is another sign. I pass. Oh, this is the fun one. All right, this is our ordinance on the lit tax. This is for EMS and EMS only. This ordinance is 0416-2024-B, ordinance modifying local income tax rates for Fulton County. Be it ordained by the county council, the Fulton County need now exist to modify the local income tax rates imposed in the following way. And there are allocation rate categories, which I'll read. One certified chair, Existing rates 1.0, proposed rate 1.0. Public safety 0.55, <coughs> proposed rate 0.55. Economic development 0 0.20, proposed rate 0 0.20. Property tax relief 0.48, proposed lit rate 0.48. Correctional and rehabilitation facilities 0 0.20, proposed lit 0 0.20. Emergency medical service. Existing rate is 0, 0.00, proposed lit rate 0, 0.20. And then there's also staff expenses for state judicial system, which is a 0, 0.0, proposed rate 0, 0.0. The local income tax rate proposed above all becomes effective October 1st, 2024. Be it a further ordained that a public hearing will be held on proposed income tax rate modifications on May 21st. Proper notice of the public hearing was provided pursuant to IC 5-3-1. Any questions, comments, please? So this is the first reading and then next month. Next month we'll do the second and, and have a public hearing. Have the public hearing. Yes. and then do the second and adopt it. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from, but this is for EMS services only. Unfortunately, um, Christine and I have been sitting down, Phil and I have sat down with umpteen different funds. We're going through all the funds that we can look at in a budget to come up with and this is a concrete way of doing it. At least we know we have this money to depend on because it's going to be expensive. Um, so after we do this, then I will explain some other stuff. But let's get this out of the way first. I will entertain a motion, unless there are no questions, I will entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 0416-2024B, Ordinance Modifying Local Income Tax Rates, Fulton County. Lori made a motion to approve. I'll second. Phil seconded. All in favor? Five. All against? 
one. Okay. Sign in the appropriate line if you would, please. No, we can't sign yet. Oh, well, that's right, we can't. I'm sorry. Not to next month. This will be brought up for second reading and uh, will be advertised for a public hearing next month. So we'll get the public input at that time. Um, so along with that same line, just real quick, we had a meeting with Parkview. Um, I should have slept since then. When was Friday. It? <laughs> Friday. Yeah. Friday. Um, it was very informative. They they told us what you know. We, we sat down with them to get their view on things. Um, I still have some questions, but that's fine. That's what that's what the process is for. The only thing we did was give the commissioners approval to enter into contract negotiations with us to have Ritter Associates enter into contract negotiations with Parkview. They did not seem to think that it was going to be a long drawn out process. We are kind of under the gun. Um, so I think it, uh, it went well. I, I had a good feeling when I left there. So um, we're going to move forward. The commissioners voted last night to move forward with it and we will continue to go uh, in that direction. So mm -hmm. uh, that's all I got on that right now. So at this point, Lutheran <clears throat> is still providing service until the end of June. Is, is that correct? It's correct. Okay. And there was a rumor, and stop me if I'm stepping out of play here. There was a rumor, and I've heard it, I've heard it personally, that Lutheran wanted to get back into negotiations and my understanding is that's false correct I was I was asked that question the rumor is false or no the rumors is, is not true. false but the, the commissioners has never been contacted by Lutheran since they pulled their that's okay. so I, I they were coming to me going you know why don't we and so I just wanted to clarify that in the meeting that we are not negotiating with Lutheran the commissioners are not I should say we the commissioner or in very in need the county and very in need yeah right but well, i did want to get that yeah, the only one he's out the only one he's got permission to talk to has been parkview yeah yes that's correct okay thank you so at this point do you feel like that parkview is interested in um <laughs> providing services to the county even though they were dismissed in the first Round. Yes, what, so, what, so what about Parkview ended thing when, when we went back to Heartland and they raised their price? Right. Well, then that, that puts Parkview actually cheaper if you do the math over the four year contract than, than Heartland. Well, Parkview's in our back door, so we know a little bit what we got with Parkview, so it tickles us to death because they got the chopper out here. They do some work through Woodlawn Hospital. So then there's relationship built with Gail and Chad, the guy that'll run the 911 service or the EMS service so we're excited about so, it so so you're somewhat encouraged somewhat encouraged of course and I know you were somewhat encouraged we with Heartland so, so, so we've been here so, we've been here a couple times one of them we've been encouraged. <laughs> so maybe you're cautiously encouraged so, so I won't say nothing until the ink is signed I, I won't understand that but uh, no we got to do something I mean you know and Ron can speak for himself, but I think we was both impressed when we walked out of that. I, will, I still say I have a couple reservations that I want to see how the, the contract comes up, but yes, I was. I was mm -hmm. I was impressed once everybody understood each other. I think when we as a committee met, I think there was some misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. They misunderstood our RFP, we misunderstood them. And I think this allowed us to to clear up some misunderstandings and uh, and move forward. I hope he's ambitious the right way, ambitious the right way, but let's, again, I'm not going to jinx it. <clears throat> We've done this two or three times now, and we can't afford another, so. So there are more <clears throat> meetings to come? Not with us. That they only, right now, all the <coughs> part you can meet with is Barry and our attorneys. Okay. Ice Miller. Okay. They're not supposed to contact any. Okay. Okay. Ron, me, Gail. Both Barry and the attorneys. If Barry's got a question, he comes to us. Okay. And then Barry is only to talk to 
uh, Park Views attorneys and Chad and Trent, correct? Correct. Um, that's well, yeah, that's they're, so that is moving forward. Yes. So, so we're past just the having coffee and talking. That's good. Okay. We should have an update by probably by the next commissioner meeting. Mm -hmm. I would, I would think. They was hoping two to three weeks. Okay. Yeah. They should have something good. on the table. Good. I'm, I'm totally confused which maybe I'm the only one, but uh, what prompted them to pull out of the second agreement to start with? We're confused too, Randy. We haven't got a clue. And then why would we think that they wouldn't do it again? Who, 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 who pulled out, he's Randy? He's he's lost. Lost. Yeah, I thought Lutheran did. Didn't they break the contract? Lutheran did pull out. Yeah. Well, they pulled out of the negotiations for the contract. Why? We don't have a clue. They didn't meet with us. That they dropped a letter from, off. That come from the corner office. They dropped a letter off in the auditor's office, and we got a phone call saying they pulled the thing. They didn't even tell us to face. So I haven't got a clue. That leaves a that really leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Well, that's me. Yeah. 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 Come from after. Now yeah. the yeah. other thing well, you I might heard. I heard in coffee shops what <coughs> people were thinking there. Mm -hmm. So. The, the other thing you might be thinking about, so, so then uh, they did offer us an extension to stick in town to the end of June to, till we found an ambulance service. So that might be what you're signing that. We signed an agreement with them to stay until June till we got an ambulance service. Yeah, but we're not negotiating with them at all, period. Yeah. If that's what, if that's what you're leaning to know, we are not negotiating with them at all it's off the table so did they pull their ambulance out of Ackman again it was never put right back right. when it pulled the first time it left and i thought they were in agreement that they were going to put one over there that was part of the contract that was part of the contract but it didn't never show up so they never upheld the contract well that no because the contract never got signed they did uphold their contract they didn't the, we never approached another contract with them, so therefore the third amendment in Akron was a no-go until they signed the contract. And then when they pulled out, of course, then that's done. Then it's done. So, but they did agree to stay until June 30th, and we were hoping that by then we could have another service for the citizens in place. In place. It, we're not sure what it's going to look like yet, but that's why we're negotiating with them right now. Thank you for the update. Thank, Any other thank, questions? Thank you, Rick. Well, I guess that. <clears throat> well, if you got a question, now's the time to ask, that's for sure. Randy, they're not in a, it's an agreement. They have an agreement currently with the commissioners. That contract is, was out of contract of January 14th. So what they've done in, in that negotiation process, <coughs> they, they couldn't come to terms and they sent the commissioners a letter advising this is what they're gonna do and if they could sign this agreement and they would stay till the end of June. And that's what they're doing until we get another service in place to maintain. If we don't, we'll have to figure something out. But at this current time, the negotiations have started with Ritter and Parkview. And, and Randy, one thing I will say, at least they've done that. I mean, yeah. th th they've done that. And if you go, <coughs> you go around and talk to any of your fire departments, the boots on the ground, the people that, that work here in this community has done a swell job. So, so don't, you know, don't get the people wound up against them. It's the bosses up the ladder that did whatever for whatever reason they done. It's not that the people live in the community and service the community. Appreciate that. Thanks, Rick, because they are. I mean, I've heard nothing but, yeah. but top-notch reports from, right. from all the people that... Everybody we've talked to. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Any other questions? I have none. Okay, we've got that. That must be Mr. That must be Mr. Lee. I bet he thinks that we start at six o'clock too. I actually thought you started at six thirty. <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah. Well, I, you can sit here for half an hour, or you can step to the podium. I'd love to go now. I have. Uh, You're welcome. To I have you. some handouts. Can I just pass these? Yes. Up here? Absolutely. How do we do this? And I'm uh, I'm actually joining the call because Alex Lee has been here um, in the okay. past. Thank you. But he was on vacation, so I'm filling in for him today. And, and say your name again. Tony Pacaltis. And who you're with? I'm with Parsons. We're an engineering <laughs> consulting <laughs> firm uh, to the Indiana Department of Transportation. You spell, you spell your last name. Yeah. Sure okay. 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 What name? What name? Oh, he's right the same. T-I-S. Thank you. I'm more concerned about the in the I well, know there are uh, uh, somebody uh, wants some extras. Basically, there's two, yeah. two different items hey. here. There's this uh, 11 by 17, and we also have the uh, Basically, they're in our own chat. Or don't take all 30 on. All right, hi, thank you. Uh, again, appreciate you having us here tonight. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Tony Bacaltis. I'm with Parsons. We're working with the Indiana Department of Transportation on the US 31 Propel study. And uh, I don't know if you've heard about that or not. That's been going on. That's a project that's been going on for, I guess, a year and a half now, and it's going to extend um, throughout the rest of this year um, as well to, to take it to completion. And what the study is, is it's looking at long-range potential improvements along the US 31 corridor. And um, our study starts at 300 north um, in Miami County and extends to the north 100 to 700 north um, in Sydney County. Right? And late last year, um, the NDOT came out with uh, what we call the level one uh, screening of alternatives. Our alternatives evaluation is going to go through three steps. Right? The first level came out last fall, universal alternatives. And during that phase, uh, we looked at a wide range of potential uh, improvements in the corridor, adding lanes, uh, different intersection treatments, interchanges, et cetera, and narrowed that down um, to what we call four potential primary concepts uh, in our study area. Uh, that's looking at um, unsignalized intersection improvements, over uh, great separation, overpass and underpasses at the inter intersections, converting inter intersections to interchanges, and uh, looking at a free flow facility with different uh, ranges of access control. So in our study area, um, again, in the northern part of Miami County and Fulton County, there's already there's no traffic signals along US 31, as you know. And so it's already free, free flow to some extent, but we would look at ways to improve that operation uh, by adding additional access control. And so that was that first level that came out last fall, and we had a public comment period on that. And we responded to comments and finalized that alternative. Uh, or that alternatives report. And now, as I mentioned, we went on to what we call level two screening. And, and the focus in the level two screening um, was to look at the primary intersections in our study area and apply those primary concepts or evaluate those primary concepts to see what makes the most sense for those intersections, right? So, you know, I've got this handout here and on the back, um, there's a map and it shows each of the primary intersections that we looked at. And then if we're looking north to south at Olson Road, uh, County Road 100 North 6th Street, State Route 25, uh, Old US 31, County Route 150, uh, Wabash Avenue, uh, 650 South, uh, State Route 16, and then 550 North Mexico Road. So and as you go from the, cor the, through the corridor north to south. And so again, we applied those primary, those four primary concepts um, and evaluated them at each of the intersections and came up with a recommendation that we're going to carry forward to the next level of screening, right? And so that's summarized on the back of this handout and we also have the eight and a half by 11 that just focuses on Fulton County, right? So we just have the Fulton County intersections here. So at each of those intersections, you see a variety of potential uh, alternatives that are going to be evaluated further um, in the next phase of the study. And so as part of the next phase of the study, we're going to look at um, that study area. We're going to look at kind of breaking it up into sections and looking at potential improvement packages um, through different alternatives. 
and uh, you know, then we'll come up with, uh, with a new report uh, when we get through that phase as well. And ultimately, we'll make a recommendation of alternatives that will be carried forward into the next phase of project development within that. So ultimately, as, our, as part of our study, we're not going to be making one recommendation for a preferred alternative. We're going to recommend. We're 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 going to finish our study with a with potential alternatives to be uh, further evaluated um, in more detail um, l later on, and and those projects will ultimately be prioritized um, based on on need uh, by INDOT and funding availability. So overall, they're looking at improvements over uh, you know the next 20 or so years. It's like a 2045 plan, and so may be a while before you see these things roll out. So back to where we are now again, level two. Uh, we've got a report out, we've got a website, Propel US 31, and um, you know we encourage people to, to look there for more information on the study. We encourage any, everyone to review uh, our study document and provide comments and ask any questions that you may have so that we can provide feedback. And just, uh, you know, again, Back to this one one page here for Fulton County. So again, at, at, there's five uh, intersections here uh, <coughs> listed for Fulton County as our primary intersections. Olson Road, uh, you know, again, potential alternatives that we're looking at: a reduced conflict intersection, an interchange, an overpass, or no build, which would mean leave it as it is today. And then you see that same type of recommendations at each of the intersections. <coughs> At State Route 25, where there's already interchange, we're just looking at potential uh, roundabouts at those ramp intersections as opposed to the regular uh, intersections that you have there today. So just two options there, ramp terminal roundabouts or a no-build alternative. At Old US 31, uh, reduced conflict inter intersection is an option, overpass, and again, no-build. So that's kind of how we've looked at it, again, at this stage, again, our, our whole study, you know, we're looking at 31 for this large corridor, 25 miles or so, but for this stage, um, our focus were on the potential treatments at the primary intersections, and we've come out, um, we've evaluated those and made those recommendations, so. This, these, this type of document provides just a general overview, and then we've got a 100 page or so document online uh, with more detail in terms of how we evaluate. So I think that's what I wanted to go over with you uh, folks here today, but certainly if you have any questions, um, I can try to answer those now. Refresh my memory, what is a reduced conflict intersection? So a reduced conflict intersection, there's, there's different treatments of that, and um, basically uh, one of the primary goals with those types of intersections is uh, at the cross street, you're removing that uh, left turn from the cross street onto 31, and those vehicles might have to take it's a, a right turn. turn. Yeah, J turns, right. Should, there's a lot of left. Sure, there's a lot of different J turn is um, <laughs> part of that RCI family. Um, but there's there's a lot of different names out there for how those uh, how those intersections and there's different options. Some have signals, some don't. Okay. Some allow the left turns off of third uh, off of the main roadway and some don't. They also provide that. So well, yeah. J turns are going to the category where it was a good idea that was you don't like the J turns. No, they're the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, we get that. You can't do it in the same way. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, according to the design standards, and I know you know, you know, you know there's discussions on that. Uh, they're designed for large, uh, any any large vehicle like that. To, to it's not gonna work. You ain't gonna do it. That's not gonna work. I personally probably wouldn't be able to drive them straight up. I do. No. I do. Sure. Yeah, definitely. We, we're hearing that, and you know, we're open to the feedback on on the J turns uh, or RCIs uh, for sure. But just so you know, um, part of the thinking of that is that they've been shown to improve safety um, along the corridor. I don't see how a J turn improves anything. And, <coughs> yeah, and, and, and not be. only, you know, there's I think, believe there's uh, seven or so of them that have been installed um, in Indiana. What they've shown is, you know, roughly a 55% reduction in crashes um, at the intersection after they've been installed, and they also drop, and they also drop the uh, 
They also reduced the severe uh, and injury related accidents as well. And that's consistent with national figures. But again, we certainly, we understand some, some folks don't like those and we've heard those complaints and, and uh, we understand that. And What's your traffic count shut yeah. off for j -turn? How, how high of a traffic volume? Yeah, well they handle it. They shut off at a certain traffic volume, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the max yeah. is, but when as we are evaluating these um, in the next level, we are conducting uh, traffic operations analysis. So um, you'll be doing a traffic the, count out there? Yeah, we have traffic counts. Um, a recent traffic count? Yeah, they're, they are recent. Um, from INDOT, we have traffic counts, and so we'll do, uh, we will do operations analysis of, the, of those in because I know the ones I've seen, if when you pull out and turn right and you got to all of a sudden you have to jump two lanes and you're pulling a trailer and jump two lanes of solid traffic in order to be able to make this left turn and that J turn, it don't work. Yeah. And I know every meeting I've been in, there isn't a person I've found yet that wants a J turn. They're just not one. Yeah, and we're, we're, we are receiving that <laughs> feedback. <laughs> He's just yeah. delivering it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I, I guess, and I'm not saying that there won't be these reduced conflict inter intersections. There very well could be, but we're at a stage where we've uh, identified them as potential solutions at the primary intersections, and they'll be evaluated further in the next stage of the study. And as I mentioned, ultimately, our study is going to conclude not with one single preferred alternative for the corridor, we are going to end up with a series of alternatives that would then go um, into more detailed uh, evaluation at a later phase, uh, focusing on smaller sections um, at that time. Mm -hmm. Once there are an interchange, I know I said, what, what do you call an interchange? So there's no right. So at State Route 25, that's an that's an that's a type of interchange. So basically, it's not a at grade. The, the roads don't cross at grade um, at the or they don't allow for that 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 direct connection at the intersection. You have to get off and hit the uh, side street and, and access access it from there through uh, our way. And that, is there a reduced uh, one of these RCIs? in the area that I can relate to you because I don't know that I, I know what they are. Yeah, now I haven't, um, I'm going off of, there's some on, on, there's one on 30 and State Route 101, I believe, is one of the intersections, and I believe um, State Route 24 and Lover's Lane, I think they said, maybe in the... 19. 19. 19, okay, thank you, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so. a pain. There's also one on 30 at Coesi Road between Columbia City, or between Warsaw and Columbia City. Mm -hmm. The J turn the Tanner mm -hmm. there at the school. <clears throat> yeah, so again, there they are out there. And um, again, INDOT um, has installed some of these, and, and again, they have found them to um, reduce crashes um, and improve safety at many intersections. <coughs> So, right. any I, other question? I have a question. So, um, I was literally just in a meeting about this in another county, and they provided the people that were asking those folks to make a decision. They provided maps in which you were able to see the impact of each of those decisions on the current footprint. Is that something you're doing? So, when you're looking at Right. All of these suggested activities, they showed, okay, if you choose the J turn, this is what the, the impact, because sure. there were identified businesses that would be impacted as well as homes that would be impacted based on each of these decisions and the mm -hmm. decision makers. Was, was that in Miami County? Or no, it was in Cosgasco County, but the, the decision makers, the council oh, and the commissioners had documents that they could look at to show, because if you're making a decision or determining decisions, they were able to say, well, this takes out so and so's home, so there's no way that we're that we are going to be, you know, comfortable with <coughs> There's a different group doing the thirty study. Oh, is that okay? And it starts at mm -hmm. seven hundred north, they yeah. go seven hundred north, then they go So there's no maps to show like that. So, so it's two different well, actually I, two different I, I was gonna say we have we have I don't know exactly 
um, which meeting you were at, or if it was part yeah. of this study, a Propel study, or a different study? It's a Propel study. I just didn't know if there was like, because I think seeing the impact of things helps people to right. be able to. But we, we have maps similar to what you're describing in our document available. It's online. online. Yeah, the, okay. those improvements that we looked at, um, we have identified that potential construction footprint. So you can see the potential um, impact area associated with the approval. Because if you're Again, doing that, yeah. these are preliminary. These are preliminary uh, identifications, and they'll be advanced further in our study at the next level, level three, and then further before anything would be implemented. But it does give you a, a sense of of the potential impact of, the, of such a group. Like the, the physical impact the of what that, the footprint. Right, it's, yeah, we, we call it a footprint, so basically it's a shaded area that over an aerial photograph, and you can see you know, what's inside of that footprint that would be potentially impacted. Depending upon each of yeah. the suggestions. Yeah. Any other comments? Sir. So from what I've seen, there's a couple of different ways that ramp terminal roundabouts can be done. Uh, what could we kind of expect with the State Road 25 interchange and how would that be more efficient or safer than the current overpass that's there? Uh, well, the overpass would stay, right? And okay. so the ramps would come off, uh, the ramps would come off as they do now from 31, the exit ramps, um, the entrance ramps would remain. It's just where those ramps intersect with route, State Route 25, mm -hmm. there would be a roundabout installed there instead of uh, a traffic signal or a stop sign that, that you have today. Hopefully they just leave it alone. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, those will all, that'll all be evaluated further. And uh, we do have the don't build option listed as still one of our uh, alternatives for all, uh, for all the intersections we're looking at. So obviously when this is done and complete, it becomes, <laughs> smooth, trouble-free travel. Every county road that's not on here will be blocked off. No, that's that's not uh, that's not that's not what that map is conveying. The map's just conveying which intersection to be focused on. Okay, well, I guess let me ask it a different way. When this project is complete, mm -hmm. so whatever happens at Olson Road, mm -hmm. whatever is decided right. from Olson Road to the county line, all those county roads are going to be blocked off. No, that's not. No, that hasn't been determined yet. They, we're gonna. We we're in in our next level of screening. Um, we're gonna look at all the secondary roads and come up with similar. Uh, you know, we're gonna have different improvement packages, so there'll be different alternatives at each of those uh, intersections in between there um, as well. And we'll be looking at when we look at those improvement packages. You know, we'll be looking at. Uh, kind of like a, a no-build alternative and then different alternatives with increased access control. So you, you, you may have one alternative that has more potential closures um, than others, but there'll be a range of alternatives that we're presenting in the next, in the next phase of the study. There's no, there's, no, um, there's no decision yet at this time on how any of the intersections will be treated. Well, obviously they can't build an overpass every mile. I mean, that's, you know, that, that's not going to happen. So some of these roads will sooner or later be blocked off, I would assume. I, I mean, you're, I, I think you're probably thinking if ultimately 31 becomes a freeway, you would potentially see more closures on the streets. But we don't know, as we are here today, we don't know that that's what's going to be ultimately recommended. And again, we're not, and that won't, no recommendation of a facility type is going to, um, is going to come out of this study. Not one, you know. We'll be again. We'll have still a range of alternatives that would be carried forward into into the future beyond this study. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> 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 Just I saw something on the map I didn't like. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I see the I see the value in in limited uh, access around South Bend. I see the value definitely improvement around Copeland. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I just don't see where the ends justify the means through this rural stretch between the two. Mm -hmm. So basically, Randy, your real safety issue is crossing 31. 
Grade crossings. Grade crossings, where you actually have to cross, the semi cannot hardly cross 31. No. You know, that's your problem. Yeah. Right hand turns, left hand turns, that's all fine. But when you're crossing the bypass, that's where the danger comes in. Mm -hmm. That's that's the real, that's what they're trying to eliminate. Especially when the grass is tall and you can't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but the good news is we're, we've got uh, 110 and 700 north pulled out of the pill study and it is ready to go to construction and I think it's 27. Mm -hmm. So there will be an interchange of some sort of that. Well, basically 10, 110 and 700 north. We teamed up with Marshall County, if you guys remember a couple of years ago, went to the state and got that pulled out because of safety issues. We're having too many accidents at 110, 10 and then 700 north be just an overpass basically for the school's buggy, buggy, buggy traffic. And them's already been halfway designed and engineered and so. <coughs> just looking like at, at Steve Road 16, which is in Cass County, you got a funeral home and a big historic house that is gonna, you're gonna encumber quite a bit of uh, expense to, to put an overpass in there because you're going to have to probably get rid of those. I don't know. I know. I just scratch my head sometimes, quite honestly, because they out here, uh, not too far from Wabash Road, out here on 31, they bought a property, destroyed the house, there was a nice farm pond there, a nice new house. And it looks to me like it'd been easier to just go over here to the farmer and buy access across this. I don't understand the logic there. Why can't they do that? Uh, wouldn't that be a lot cheaper than, than destroying a guy's farm pond and its home? And that, I know they paid a lot more money than they could have been when they just got an access buried off the county road. But I'm just thinking out loud, I guess. Is there is there a reason why they do dumb things like that? For me, it's dumb. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know the specific situation, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough for me to address that. Well, you might take Torford down there, okay? You know where that's at, south of 14 on 31. They got a, had a good business coming in now there. Now you're going to block that off. Why couldn't you go down there off that other county road? And make an access road where they still got their business. I don't. I don't. I don't I understand mean, that. It, yeah. Again, you know, um, as we're looking at this project further in the next level, and we, you know, if, at those locations where we're looking at, at, at I mean, closing the crossing, we have, we will also consider alternate access. I think similar to what you're what you're speaking of. You know, again, I don't. I don't know the exact, um, you know, thing you're referring to, but based on what I'm hearing you say, you know, you know, why, why just close it and the business is lost? Um, you know, we will consider again alternate access um, if it's viable you know, to help you know that property remain. You know, we're going to look at a lot of different options. There's a lot of different ways to look at those things, and we're still investigating. Randy, I don't mean to cut you off because you got valid concerns, but that's not his. Let me just prove you right now, nor ours. So that's something to do at a future time. Okay. Your, your concerns are new. Yeah. And you're not the only one that's, that's uh, expressed those. But thank you for your, your questions. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Did everyone get a chance to read the minutes? Yes, sir. If everyone's read, entertain the motion to entertain the minutes for March 19th meeting. So moved. So moved. Pete seconded. All in favor? 6 0. This is another sign. We have one transfer request. And that is from 1235, let PSAP to communications, repair and maintenance, 
to office supplies, $15. Claim used the wrong object, object account, 32301 repair and maintenance, needs to be transferred to the proper line item, 21000 office supplies. Make a motion to approve. Steve approve. We have a second. All second. Bill second. All in favor? Five zero. Pete abstains. I don't need to end with that. Now we've got several additional appropriations. I guess we're leave that out. <coughs> First one's from County General to capital outlays. <laughs> $10,898. It's to the sheriff. It's for two sheriff vehicles. One at 6323, the other at 4575. The above requested amounts are funds received from the auction of two vehicles and the insurance payout from the 2016 Ford Taurus that was totaled when struck by another vehicle on US 31. Request the appropriation of these funds to be used toward the purchase of a replacement vehicle. Okay. Entertainment move approved, Steve approved. Second, P to second. All in favor? Six zero. Sign and pass. Sign and pass. Next one is Coombe Bridge for the Highway Department. Additional appropriations for bridge number 50, $16,640. The amount anticipated to be spent for the bridge number 50 federal aid project was underestimated. Appropriations to cover future and current costs. Again, this is out of 1135 Coombe Bridge. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Bill, Pete Sagan, all in favor? Six zero. Sign your right on this. Next one. <clears throat> it's from Fund 1152. LAPC to Office or 0361 Emergency Management. For training, $2,825. This is covering the portion of the 23 training, causing the 24 training budget to go into the red. The 24 training budget will be covered by a grant. Questions? Steve, motion to approve. Need a second. Randy, seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Five zero. Pete, abstain. <coughs> Next one from 1176 MVH other charges 4670 appropriations to cover the schooling fee for Randy Miller CDL and replenish funds for CDL drug screen and federal compliance. Again, out of 1176, motion to approve or any questions? I'm sorry. Motion to approve. So Order motion to approve. All second. Bill second. All in favor? Six zero. Next one is eleven eighty one Platte Book Auditor's Office. Preservation Services, one thousand six hundred and forty. Information and Records Association 2023 bill that was sent in 24. There was no budget in 2024 for this service as we went digital going forward and we need to appropriate to pay the one last bill. Any questions? Motion to approve. Lowering motion to approve. Second. All second. Randy, Randy seconded. Good. All in favor? Six zero. Sorry, Lori, <laughs> anticipated. <clears throat> and last but not least, rainy day to the commissioners. This is a contract 
$26,300. What? ADA transition plan and mm -hmm. Title VI inflammation plan mm -hmm. updates. Any questions? Commissioners. Yeah. I will entertain, for no question, entertain. Pete made the motion to approve. Need a second? I'll second. Bill seconded. All in favor? Six zero. And that's it. That's it. Excuse me, Rob. Oh. How many appropriations did you have from the highway? Uh, Pete, let me out, please. That's it. Should be three. That's five and one, and that's up to me. <laughs> One was a bridge, I remember that. It should have been uh, 16,640 from the bridge, mm -hmm. 29,000. I don't remember. <coughs> Yeah, that's all in your folder. Mm -hmm. Well, the commissioners last night. <coughs> I think she took back to the office too. That's all right. The same stack. Yeah. 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 I can run it. Yeah. 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 I've got a copy of it. You need it? Yeah, I don't have computers and all that. Taking the copy, I'm taking it right now. Yes, sir, sir. Take it, read it, and then they could sign the copy. There's one. Next week. Yeah, we can sign that. Yeah, we can sign the other one. Okay. Yes, I mean, you know. I see. Something was. I mean, it had the age and you couldn't read it. Well. What was it? Yeah, we didn't do that. The bridge 161 we didn't do. Correct. It's like the last one, 161. Yes, yeah, the last appropriation for us. See, that's what I've got the question. I was just saying. Did the commissioners? Did the commissioners? Did the commissioners? Yeah, all three of them say that. Did the commissioner sign them last night? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Holly okay him too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, okay. I do remember that email now that you said that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did and she did. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I remember John sent that email out to Holly. Okay, did. Okay. Yeah. We had to run a correction in the newspaper. Yes, I remember. We had that met the qualifications for it. And okay. you did, and it was presented and signed and yes. all. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to them as they were presented on our on here. And that should cover it if they need to have it. All right. Okay. Um, I don't have a sign sheet for this. <clears throat> I think she's going to get you a see if she can find it, isn't she? And know what she's doing? Yeah, yeah uh, she right. went down. So we will go ahead and do this, and then we will. Then we'll pass them to sign. Then we'll pass it to sign. Fair enough. All right, this is out of Coombe Bridge for the Highway Department, bridge number 161. 29,000. In fact, that's what you talked about earlier. The amount anticipated to be spent for Bridge 161 Federal Aid Project was underestimated. Appropriation to cover future projected costs. Any questions? If no questions, I'll entertain the motion to approve. Lori approved. Pete Sagan, all in favor? 6 0. And I will have a thing to sign, and we'll get that. Sign. Okay, that was bridge one. Who, who, so for for the minutes, who Lori approved? I, and and Pete second. second. And Pete second. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, that's Sorry. right. Okay. This is my way. Okay. Thank you. That's well, all right.
Thank you. No, I'm um, thank you for bringing that up. Well, that's okay. <coughs> okay. So the next one is. All right, well. I can't find anything. The only thing I found was what was in the folder, and I printed those off, but that isn't the same as that. So I don't know. We have that one. We We've done that one. Which other one did we do? Forty-six hundred or twenty-nine thousand. Twenty-nine. This is the one we need. That's not in there. Okay. All right. We. She took notes for you. So. Oh. So we did bring one sixty-one. One sixty-one. Yes. Okay. Lori moved to approve. Pete seconded. Okay. 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 And motion carried. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's quite all right. We didn't get this done right. Now you're on what? Bridge 50? No, we're done. There was, there was three. There was three. You, you Pete says he has two. There's two. Yeah. one. So. Yeah. so so that's it? Akron High School Mass. Okay. So that's okay. The one okay. Stop it. Okay. All righty. Next, old business. Pete? No, sir. Randy? No, sir. Lori? Steve? No. Bill? Nope. I have none. We've already talked about the uh, EMS and ambulance, so that was my old business. Shondell, anything you know of? Anyone? Old business? Then we will move to new business. Pete? No. Randy? No. Lori? Steve? No. Bill? Just a couple. I'll be brief. Since when? I'll be brief. <laughs> Uh, the county's portion of the host fee funds for December 2023 was $24,802.80 and the county's portion of the host fee funds for January this year was $30,245.83. So, and my second one is, I have to... Uh, give a shout out. Habitat for Humanity is having, did you guys talk about this last night? No, we did not. Is having the, their ribbon cutting ceremony for their new office and storage building, which is behind the House of Decor, on Thursday, May 2nd at 4 o'clock. And the reason I'm telling you that is because ARPA funds of 90000 is what allowed that um, new building to happen. So if anybody wants to go to the ribbon cutting ceremony for Habitat for Humanity, Thursday, May 2nd, 4 at 917 Franklin Avenue, uh, behind the House of B. Court. That's all I've got. I don't have any, I don't. Anyone out there, old business? With that being said, sir, do you have something you'd like to say? If you do, please state your name. Bob Pomius, and uh, your website said this started at 6.30. <clears throat> website says 6.30. Yeah. Will the minutes be on the website? Uh, not, it be after our May meeting. We have to approve them before they're on the website. Right, but they would, next week I could read the minutes. And From, that we just approved tonight, and right. that was March's meeting. April's meeting will not be on until after we approve it in May. They run a month behind. Uh, I see. <clears throat> you, you already answered the question you said about the ambulance situation. So I wasn't here to hear what the questions were. Uh, can I give you a couple the short answers? Sure. How's the tax collected? If there is a tax, how's it collected? The, the tax, we are starting the process, is called the, the local income tax. It's two-tenths of a percent on state income. For everybody that works in Fulton County. For everybody that works in Fulton County. Who, who would possibly have a need for I think it's I think it's for residents. It's not big works, is it? It's, it's on the county income tax. County and for income residents tax. of Fulton County. Thank you. Of the residents. Yes. So people working in Fulton County funds <laughs> wouldn't be paid. For. No, it'll be on your county you if you're a county resident. Be paying into that fund? I do not know an exact number, no. The the estimate income from that is right in the vicinity of a million dollars a year. 
that's based on income of working folks in India. They're going to be short to start with. That, and we're looking at other options, yes. We have no other way around it. I hate it because I'm, I'm going to have to pay more. Do, do we get better service with the new, new uh, the proposed ambulance service? I, I was told it, a difference between EMTs and paramedics. Gail, this is your bad way. There is a difference between EMTs and paramedics. There is. There's basic, there's ALS and BLS, and what, it's an advance, and then BLS is basic. And we are in negotiations with Parkview um, at this time. As you know, um, or may not know, Parkview has been in our backyard 20 plus years. They'll be here, their anniversary is 25 years this year. They work with our local hospital here, Woodlawn. Um, they have excellent staffing. They have great relationships with us. I've worked with them that 25 years. Um, the, the director that oversees EMS and I, we work hand in hand. Um, that relationship and that partnership is already there. So when you look at Lutheran and you look at Parkview, obviously they're two different worlds. They're two different companies, but uh, they have policies and procedures in place, same as anyone else, maybe a higher standard, and their uh, proposal to us, they gave us um, what their costs are to the public. Um, those are different than your current um, ambulance service now. So the service will be the same. They have very good paramedics and uh, basics as well. You say the same, so it'll be an ambulance and after in Tijuana? That is cor correct. Our current contract negotiations is for three ambulances. Now, now, in the beginning, we, we've, we're, we're going to have to move, so and we've got to get those assets here in the county. They're already established in the surrounding counties, mainly on the east side of the state and here, but um, they already have an establishment with ambulance service. They do air medics, obviously. They do uh, ambulance service and um, they have the same adequate staff. They work with the same tools. Do we really believe Maybe we different a, brands. Do we need an ambulance in Akron and Tijuana? Or could we have better trained first responders? Well, the, the problem lies with these first responders are volunteer. Uh, they do not get paid. It might be $5 a run. Um, they have to be, uh, they don't have to be, but they take an, e it's called an EMR. Um, where they can uh, be their first responder status, but getting that volunteer group and having them at the station and available is is a struggle. And it's a struggle on to hire folks as well as it is with any company, agency, or healthcare situation to keep working staff. But um, they, they move their ambulances, they, their coverage, they understand the coverage, um, they speak our language. I will tell you they sh use the same uh, EMS, emergency medical dispatch protocols and standards that I do, which is the best of the best, the highest, they're international. Um, so we're already working on the same page. It's just you're going to see a different ambulance here with a different color. You're still gonna have service. And so what a lot of people don't know is on the outer agencies like the east and the west side is these, these territories cover outside because your surrounding counties don't have ambulances either. So these county pays our first responders to go into their county. So you got somebody like Kiwana in Akron that they're serving Kosciuszko, Mar uh, Wabash, Miami County, you know, and then you got over at Kiwana in Grass Creek area, the, the farthest corner, you got one commissioner that lives in a uh, county highway. They live clear at the corner. It takes a good 20, 30 minutes at minimum driving a speed that you don't want. So having those outside ambulance service is a need for service for emergent care. And when we start moving those, because sometimes we have four or five calls and all ambulances are out, but what we do, we never get 
to ground zero where we don't have an ambulance here we pull from another county and that means that county is missing one of their ambulances and we place those strategically throughout and so Parkview has their system they also have a CAD system and they also know where all their ambulances are at all times so your level of care is not going to change and is what's sad is we've developed relationships with uh, they call that the boots on the ground or our local paramedics and EMTs here and it's going to be sad so hopefully some of those stay if they don't have jobs and they work for Parkview um, with the state with those same faces so it's like losing a family member really when you have that <coughs> but at a corporate level they're looking at it at a different angle versus something here locally when we need those needs and those necessities and that care for our community. So I will tell you being and working with uh, Parkview for 25 years, I don't, I don't think a threat, a threat is there. I, I was very impressed with the meeting that we had. We were all on the same page. It went well like a well-oiled machine. There was a misunderstanding when they put their first RFP in um, just understanding RF, RFP and that's a request for proposal and um, Lutheran was there with the numbers I mean nobody's going to beat zero dollars right so with Parkview that was um, I mean that was too much money to switch to somebody that was already in our own backyard to begin with and then when we went with Lutheran a long time ago Parkview was here too but they never even got a chance to bid at that time as well so they are they are here they have always been here they have never left and uh, they are great for our community and I can't say enough that uh, Barry's in negotiations with them and um, any questions can be directed to Barry Ritter because at this time we're out and the commissioners have granted that uh, negotiations to start yesterday so he'll be working with their attorneys and Parkview to make sure um, our requests here locally are met and um, and those dollar exchanges are with the council and um, go from there so thank you you're welcome Thanks for the time. Hey, that's quite all right and I will look into that I thought they'd been changed they're in a process of redoing the website I do know that yeah, I don't know where they're at they're Pardon me? We're open July. July? That the process we're doing this. I didn't know it was still six thirty. It's it says five o'clock on the website. Oh. Thank you. So for that. I, maybe I had the wrong website. Well, yeah, Fulton, yeah, Fulton I, County, I, Indiana Council. And mm -hmm. I swear the, the list of things, the meetings every third Tuesday, six thirty. Well, now you know it's at five o'clock. Five o'clock, so and you're welcome. Five, five o'clock, so it wasn't even close to being. <laughs> Still got here, so. Kim catch it on the TV though on channel. Yeah, channel on RTC. I can afford TV. <laughs> <laughs> I got my I got my transistor radio from 1961. <laughs> Keeps playing WLS. <laughs> so is, is there any take a motion? Well, one last thing before we do. Does anyone want to read this thing from Charlie Rude, Charlie Rude on the Kimona Public Library and how they use the art funds? No, all right, all right. And that I'll entertain. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Pete made the motion. Randy seconded. All in favor? Six zero. Thank you very much for your time.